Well hello everyone and welcome to another video from the Canal Signings Model Railway channel. Um, last time I was playing with class 31s um, and you'll remember that I was looking at two of them which is uh, the um, one on the right as you're looking which is one that I've had for a long time which I rescued um, from an eBay seller uh, who, just, who was selling it with all the lighting destroyed in it and the sh all the body mounts broken but anyway it now works completely rewired um, and works a treat um, last time I was actually working on the one in the middle which is the um, Hornby Lima hybrid that's a Lima body and chassis frame with Hornby bogies and motor grafted into it um, I've now fitted all the lights to it as you can see it uh, it has front lights and marker lights and it has rear lights um, and I have also fitted it with cab lights um, at the moment they're possibly a little bright but the, the most important thing is that they just come straight on what I intend to do is turn them on with a flicker like fluorescent lights which is what a lot of locos were later fitted with as I understand it it does have independent cab lights don't think you can see the one at the other end um, but it does actually work independently there's no sound in this loco um, decided not to fit that um, but essentially the conversion is finished what I did do was take the Hornby uh, the old Hornby donor loco I took its fan grill and grafted that into the roof of the Lima body um, because the Lima fans are terrible um, I've also fitted uh, 0.45 wire handrails on the front instead of the moulded lemur ones um, and I fitted the Hornby windscreen wipers uh, and re-glazed uh, the whole loco using um, South Eastern Fine Cast Flush, flush Glaze um, so I have a, a very good loco, it runs really well, it's not as heavy as a Hornby loco um, it weighs about 100 grams less than a Hornby loco, maybe a little more However, it will haul everything I want it to haul without slipping, so I'm quite happy with it. Since then, I also picked up another Hornby Loco, which I'd bought some time ago. Um, I thought, I'll just put a DCC decoder in that and we'll have that one working as well. Yeah, that'll be the day. Um, that one turned out to be a faulty buy from eBay as well, with a, um, a, a clonking noise as it ran. Um, with a, um, a tendency to seize up and, and just stop and hum but not move. And that turned out to be, in one of the bogies, a gear with a tooth missing. How the hell people break teeth off like that, I do not know. That's not the first loco I've found like it. In fact, that you can just see a blue Class 08. Um, I did a video about that a year or two ago now. Had the same problem, a tooth broken off in deep down in the bowels of the mo uh, of, of the loco. Anyway, I, I had to buy a whole new bogey for that one um, because you can't, it seems, buy the gears separately. So I now have a bogey with a gear tooth broken, but plenty of gears spare. Um, I have put sound in that one. Um, I've put a TTS decoder alongside a Lay's DCC decoder. My usual way of doing it. So the Lay's DCC coder, decoder drives the lighting and the motor and the TTS decoder provides the sound. Um, and it works quite well. I've actually used Hornby speaker in it. Um, and it sounds quite good. It's got, as I say, it's got a TTS decoder exactly the same as the one on the right. Um, the one on the right, the TTS decoder is driving the whole loco and I really don't like the drive characteristics of it. Its acceleration is unpredictable. That's not really true. It's just not even. Um, not only is its acceleration unpredictable, but its deceleration is also odd. I just don't like Hornby's TTS decoder motor drive. It's awful. I think it comes from an old lens idea, but even lens have dropped that and gone to the standard way of doing things. Anyway, enough moaning about Hornby. That is what I've been doing. Um, I can't really run anything because, as you'll see, 
in the next part of the video um, I don't have any running lines anymore so I'm going to take you off the tripod now spin you around uh, well, hold you in my hand and we'll show you what I've been doing after that so back soon okay so here we are looking the other way and as you can see I've uh, been working over here wiring up some of the railway um, I apologize for the shape because I am hand holding the camera now um, we have a baseboard missing from here as you can see um, just zoom out a little bit baseboard missing from here this is the last baseboard that is in there's also a baseboard missing off the end and the baseboard that normally has the bridge on it is missing hence I can't run trains but what I've been doing and the evidence of that is here is wiring up the system um, and basically I've been wiring it up to the diagram that I think I sort of alluded to last time I might have showed you a little bit of it I don't know but I drew a diagram on my PC of all the wiring interconnects between all the boards and essentially it breaks down into two looms like this two wire looms one for the actual power which includes DCC and plus 12 volts for um, all the uh, accessories lighting etc and then a 5 volt for all the signals um, and that is what is in there all the DCC wiring is in there and all of the um, 5 and 12 volts and that actually runs all the way around here it runs underneath there all the way along there and if we go under the baseboard you can see that it continues to run all the way along there all the way to the end if we come back up the top again and walk down this end it comes up over there and into those shiny connectors that you can see there which join it up to my distribution board that I, panel box whatever you like to call it that I built some time ago and has been in use it's got all the power districts in it so um, what I've been doing is wiring this up and getting the connections to all the boards here is one board connection which takes DC this is only the DCC and power bus as I say this takes DCC to the board that goes here there's another one here that takes the DCC to the board that goes there and if you look there'll be one here somewhere that takes DCC to this board and that one's as you can see that one is hardly wired at all yet um, sorry about that rather swift movement there um, and then up here we have another board connection that will go to that board and another board connection here that is still being wired that goes up to this board so oh, I've got to get up again so as you can see there's a lot been going on um, and I've been wiring it up and, and making all the uh, all the diagrams of all the connectors and everything to, to sort it out to make sure that I can fix it hang on I'm just having a bit of trouble holding the camera here okay um, the way I've been wiring it is using these things which are scotch lock connectors I'll show you them in a minute and many people use them um, and you just can lock you can join wires together with them without having to solder in the middle of the bus that thing you can see there in the middle is one of these which is my relay module which is what I use to switch between the two um, command stations the DCC command stations um, the normal position with the relay not energized is uh, to be running off of the standard DCC and when the relay is energized the section that we're talking about is switched into the braking command station which is a sprog and causes the train to stop um, you've seen that in an earlier video um, it's only about two or three videos ago just go and have a look I can't I can't tell you what video number it is simply because um, my signaling information is scattered over several videos um, but there is on the on my YouTube channel there is actually a playlist um, I think that has all the videos that talk about signaling in it 
Um, uh, if, if that's not correct, I apologise. I do try to do things like that, but don't always manage to remember to put it in every playlist. Anyway, as you can see, that hasn't come out very well. I'm just going to change the way I'm holding this camera because I can't do it from here. OK, as you can see, this is a bit of a mess. I don't like the way it comes out of the front of the box. It's all wired in along there. There, there, there will be some more wires here that drive the relays. They're just not there yet. They come from the signal bus, which is not in yet. Um, but these, are, it's all a bit untidy. I'm not very really happy about it. So what I did with this one was I made some holes in the end. As you can see, there's one in that end. And there's one in that end with the intention that at least the wiring would come out of the end. But what I've subsequently decided is that I am going to plug the whole thing in and I'm going to put a connector on the top here, wire it all up to it and then have another connector which is connected into the loom. Whether I'll rewire that one or not is unknown. Probably not. I'll leave it and rewire it if I get a problem with it. Um, but with the others, I'll be able to unplug them. There are two more to do. Um, there's one that goes behind me, over there, and there's one that goes way down there at the other end of the room. Um, and they do all the braking sections on the main lines. Anyway, that's what I've been doing. Um, it is a relatively short video today. So what I'm going to do is sign off now and get on with all this wiring. Once I've done all the DCC, then I will get the trains running again and I'll lay some track um, and try and get that all working and then I'll start working on the signal buses. Um, so I'll try and come back perhaps when I've done the DCC buses so you can, you know, we'll, we'll run a train around and you can see a few things operating um, and the track will be laid in the right place. But that's going to be a little way off so it may be quite a while because we're coming up to the winter now and it gets pretty cold in this room in the winter and I don't like to spend hours and hours in here. Um, I've probably got another two weeks of work just finishing off the DCC buses, maybe longer. I may have underestimated the amount of work that there is to do. Um, but I'm guessing another two weeks work of that um, and then to wire up the boards for DCCs there's probably a month so it may well be six weeks before I have a chance to even run a train um, and in six weeks time we will be uh, entering winter so if I've got my time scale wrong then I shall be uh, decamping as I normally do to the lounge um, on my little portable table and I shall be working in there which means I won't be doing any wiring up in here what I shall be doing is uh, something else, probably building some kits or something like that. Don't know, haven't worked it out yet. But anyway, I'll be back as soon as I can, but don't expect a video all that quickly.